Welcome back to another vlog. This one is going to be special. I finally reached Cappadocia after traveling through Antalya, Konya. I'm finally here in Cappadocia. Cappadocia is a real magical place here in Turkey. It needs to be experienced. I've seen a lot of people do videos here in summer, but rarely ever has anyone seen it in winter. So I arrived here in winter. This video will be in two parts. The first part, I will focus on the village of Goreben, which is the capital or the hub of Cappadocia. And in the second part, I'll upload tomorrow, which is a really special one, because we'll go and visit the 80 million year old fairy chimneys. Let's start with the video. Back with another <laughs> vlog. You won't let me talk. <laughs> It's your boy Ari again. I'm in Cappadocia today and what you're looking at behind me is an 80 million year old rock formation and the Romans built a castle into it around 3400 BC. So that's a really long time ago and you can see them all the way in the distance as well. We're gonna go take a look a little bit more around the town. I've seen a lot of videos about Cappadocia but nobody has done one in winter. I will fly the drone to see what it looks like later. Most of the videos that I have seen though about Cappadocia are more about tourism and I just want to walk around. I'm, I'm not really sure what I want to do and I think that's more raw, staying at uh, expensive balconies to get that view. That's not what this vlog is going to be about. I'm actually in Goreme. So Goreme is, let's just call it the hub of Cappadocia. Cappadocia is a large region and if you want a place to stay and explore, I truly recommend Goreme. So Goreme is a village here, probably one of the best ones, just because it's closer to everything else. The only thing that's a little bit far from here is the underground city, which is about a 45 minute to an hour drive from this town here. But mostly everything that you want to do is right in this location, including the hot air balloon rides and some of the fairy chimneys. They're only about maybe even a five minute drive. But for most of it, you could just walk around and enjoy the whole entire scenery to yourself. Those pigeonholes, they used to train falcons and the falcons would send messages from one home to another home, right up there too. They built uh, hotels into them and you could actually spend the night. If you ever want to do that, look for cave hotels. Then they're actually everywhere in this village here. And the village itself is actually beautiful if you want to just walk around. Strolling around this village will be beautiful. Even in winter, it has a really nice charm to it. Not sure if you guys could see that. And uh, right there, I see a Knights Templar logo right up on the little rock formation there. I don't know how I spotted that, but yes, something of a religious significance. <laughs> So this is what I was talking about. You could get yourself a cave suite and you could actually live up in the caves right in there. But look at this view. Unbelievable. Wow. I found a space that says Anatolian houses. I'm gonna see if I could go up there and get a nice view. That'll be pretty cool. It seems open, so let's go inside. I see some other locals here just wandering around. Not many tourists, mostly like local tourists at this time of the year. Yeah, and there's a lot of places you can stay, whether you are on a budget or whether you wanna spend a little bit more money than usual. Guys, if you're into Instagram and taking photos, this has got to be it. I love photography myself. I usually like shooting photos of people. This would be a nice place to come for a photo op. I can imagine renting a room here and sitting here having a little coffee, cigarette, right by these formations, wow. But I just saw something super interesting as I was coming. So this is a room you could rent, but right above it, look at that. 
that's original. I actually asked somebody and they told me that's original. Took a look at that. There's a guy hunting. I see some designs. There's the sun up there. Some other symbols that I'm not familiar with, obviously. That's really cool. I honestly thought that this was only one area that has this, but when you do look in distance, they're everywhere. And all the way behind those mountains, as I was driving here, you could still see it in the distance. So this entire area has these rock formations, or I should say entire region. Turkey, underrated. Turkey is a beautiful country. That's all I got to say. I want to see if I have time to uh, climb that hill right there. It's a popular tourist destination with the Turkish flag at the top, but we're quite a little distance from there. So first, let's fly the drone in this city and see what we could see from an aerial viewpoint. Do I recommend Cappadocia region in winter? Absolutely. The place is still lively the way I see it. Some of the hotels, they're actually closed for the season, but for most places, the restaurants are still open. I'm pretty sure summertime is a lot more livelier. But in winter, you get the entire town kind of to yourself. It's an 80 million euro formation, but some of the locals around 1500 years ago, they were trained falcons and they would fly falcons to send one message from one place to another. So how did I get to Cappadocia? I have a car. So first I went from Kosh to Antalya. I saw my friends. And from Antalya, I went to Konya where I visited Melvana Rumi's tomb beautiful by the way if you're ever in Konya take a look at that place if you ever want to see those whirling spinning Sufis it's some sort of a meditation I don't know how they do it but they do it for hours without stopping that's the birthplace of the whirling Sufis as well as the Melvana teachings the tomb of Melvana Rumi himself I came from Konya to here it was another about four hours it took me a little bit longer just because the roads were really icy on the way here, so you gotta be careful if you're coming at night. It was pitch black outside, and I really couldn't see anything. Today we're in Cappadocia. Still got a lot more to explore. I wanna see what else we can find here in this region. So I find myself a little place to just sit down and eat. The food looks great, and uh, the prices are awesome around here. So you can see like a breakfast like that for 35 Turkish liras, and then you get, you know, sandwich which was for like 30 Turkish, 25, 30, yeah, really cool stuff. So I'm gonna take a look in here and sit down and I'll eat and I'll tell you the review. Nice place, brother. I'm from Canada. Canada? Yes, sir. Nice. Sometimes nice, sometimes not so nice. <laughs> Big country. Oh, I love Cappadocia, bro. I love it. So much history here. All right. We got some fresh pomegranate yes. juice. Right in the snowy Cappadocia. <laughs> Let's see that. There you go. That's how you do it. One more. <laughs> All right, guys. I just had a great meal here with my friend. Sir, Sir Serkan, yes. Serkan. Ali. And uh, yeah, you know my name. Nice and to meet you. Yeah, <laughs> very cool, man. Cool guy here. He has a nice little restaurant. I just had an awesome meal. If you're ever in Cappadocia. Kasaba Cafe, uh, Turkish name, town, English name. Uh, Turkish name, Kasaba Cafe. Turkish name is Kasaba, Kasaba. Cafe. Yes. And right. he also owns a, a hotel you could stay at. It's actually a cave hotel. So this is Kasaba Cafe. You could stay here. That's the WhatsApp number. My friend Serkan here, that's the address. And uh, this is also the Cave Hotel, which also owned by the same family. And his brother is there right now. I'm gonna go take a look at it. But you can stay at a Cave Hotel. He owns the restaurant and the hotel. So if you're ever around here, come take a look at my friend here, Serkan. <laughs> Tell him something, give him a good message. Hello, come in the Casaba Cafe and Cave Hotel, nice. Okay. <laughs> That's perfect. That's good enough for me, man. <laughs> awesome, thank, brother. Thank you, Ari. Very cool, man. Give me a high five. Thank you, Ari. <laughs> yeah, man. So uh, come check out my friend here. I'm sure you'll enjoy it, whether it's uh, winter or summer. Come take a look later.
on my way to the open air museum but on the way there like these are just so cool this is Goreme like I was saying it is the hub of Cappadocia so this is kind of like the capital of Cappadocia and it's a it's a great spot to come and start your journey from here if you want to kind of explore the region but you can see even in winter I mean restaurants are open people are having a good time most shops are open and uh, so even if you're here in winter there's still a lot to do summertime things will be busy but the way I see it right now is uh, mostly Turkish tourists as of right now but in the summertime I'm pretty sure you're gonna see a lot more than that it's so good so Cappadocia in winter it is lively here in winter too the open-air museums were also open guys Turkey if I drive three hours south which I am I'm going to Adana it's actually 11 degrees Celsius over there just three hours south from me and over here I'm experiencing in the minus 11 minus 12 today right now tonight it's gonna snow here but it's gonna be sunny in Adana and it's only a three-hour drive which I am going to make after I go see the what they call the love valley as well as the the fairy chimneys here in Goreme area I don't think I'll have time to climb up the castle and the main tower to get a nice viewpoint but with the drone I could kind of get the same kind of point of view Turkey man I'm so like look I've fallen in love with Turkey and that's no surprise you guys have seen the way I talk about it before coming to Turkey I had no idea what it was about what it was like and I know a lot of tourists that come here for a couple of weeks but I've been here for months and I've experienced different types of foods I made friends I've traveled around the south the the western a little bit now I'm doing the central area like Cappadocia area it just blows my mind every time I'm out there shooting videos getting the drone footage I'm a new youtuber so I'm not sure if I'm actually explaining things very well or if I'm kind of articulating my words in a way so that you guys could experience what I'm experiencing here you need to be here to fully take it all in these videos they don't do it justice you just watch this video of Cappadocia but you got to come here for yourself and any other place that I've shown just because there's just so much to see and look it just it feels like the most magical place I've ever been here Cappadocia I heard a lot about it and I didn't know I was gonna expect this but it's truly a magical place the history the people just the scenery is unbelievable very rare you don't usually get to see something like this anywhere else in the world the rock formations are very unique when you look at the history of things here it takes a little bit of time to just kind of take it all in I was overwhelmed with the amount of information about this region and even though I have so much to talk about this place you really need to come see and do your own research because you'll have to experience it on your own and look at my friends here I don't have anything bro nice dogs Turkish dogs man they're friendly they don't they don't bother anybody they just mind their own business if I had food I'd give them I really love the dogs in Turkey they're really cool and look where you live eh buddy that's where you're living in the streets of Cappadocia I'm gonna head to the ferry chimneys now it's about a maybe a 10 minute drive and then I'm gonna go to Love Valley which is about another like 15 minute drive from the chimneys so tomorrow I'll post part two where I meet some new friends and we'll go and explore some of the caves together where where civilizations had lived in for thousands of years